Good morning. This is morning prayer for Friday, September 13th from St. John's Anglican Church in Southampton, Pennsylvania. I'm Jay Trailer. I'm Elizabeth. Thank you for joining with us today. We have a saintly commemoration and it's one of my favorites. Yeah, if you know anything about us and Jay in particular, you know that John Chrysostom is pretty high on the list of of favorite early fathers. Yeah, so John Chrysostom is best known not for his doctrine like Tertullian or for his um, his help of growth and expansion of the church like some of the early bishops or monks. John Chrysostom is best known for his preaching. Um, his homilies were legendary. Um, they produced many converts uh, in Constantinople. And in fact, two of them are still often done today um, the Nativity homily, which is usually done on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, and the Paschal homily, which is often read at the Easter vigil on mm-hmm. Saturday night before Easter or during the, the Easter morning service. And they are just great. And Christostom, doesn't that mean uh, golden tongue? Golden mouth. Golden mouth. Yeah, so oh, it's that not makes a, sense. It's not his last name. It was his nickname. You know, old, so today is old Johnny Golden Mouth's day. Yeah. And just so for those playing along at home, Chris, uh, that's the golden part. If you think about a chrysanthemum, Mm -hmm. which are always, you know, like golden in color. Mm -hmm. And I guess... Stoma. Stoma for mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at us doing all Latin and Greek and stuff. Thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite, and to stifle the yawns. And to stifle the yawns. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we we have have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. sheep. We We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We We have have offended offended against your holy laws. We have have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And And apart apart from from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, Lord, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth <clears throat> shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's say the Benite together. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O come, come, let let us us sing sing unto the Lord. Lord. Let Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. salvation. Let Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving thanksgiving and show show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. We have two psalms today, I think. I think it's 32 and 36. Blessed is the one whose unrighteousness is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the one to whom the Lord imputes no sin and in whose spirit there is no guile. For a while I held my tongue, my bones wasted away. I ceased not from groaning all the day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night and I was dried up and withered as in the drought of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin unto you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my sins unto the Lord, 
and so you forgave the wickedness of my sin. For this reason shall all the ungodly make their prayers unto you at a time when you may be found. When the great floodwaters rise, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall encompass me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go, and I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse and the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with brit and bot brit <laughs> whose mouths must be held with bit and bridle, or else they will not come near you. Great troubles remain for the ungodly, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, O you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord, and be joyful, all who are true of heart. This, I think, is almost universally applicable to anyone who strives to follow Christ. And, and I've read this psalm, you know, a hundred times, and I don't know that this has ever hit me. What? Um, for a while I held my tongue. My bones wasted away. I did not cease from groaning all the night long because your hand was heavy upon me. Then I acknowledged my sin unto you, and I did not try to hide my iniquity. How many of us, and I know that it's certainly true with me, have just felt the weight of hidden, unconfessed, yep. undealt with sin. Yep. And it just and, and it leaks out in so many weird ways and we do things to try to cover it up yep. or distract ourselves. And all we need to do is go to God and say, I did this thing. Help. Mm-hmm. And there is forgiveness. Yes. Every time. And it's sometimes it's so it it's so, you know, it's kind of the offensiveness of grace. It's such that we can't believe that we could just be forgiven from this thing. And you have to remind yourself that Christ bled and died for that sin. He knew what he was doing when he did it. Yes. And two other points just building on that. Um, when you confess your sin, then you become, verse 2, you become one to whom the Lord imputes no sin mm -hmm. because <clears throat> that sin was imputed to Christ. That's right. and, and so when we, when we confess, <coughs> then, then the sin becomes, our sin is, is crucified with Christ. Right. Um, and we truly become blessed. We become happy. Yes. And that's the journey he makes, the uh, groaning all the day long. Mm -hmm. My bones wasted away. I was dried up and withered. Then I acknowledged my sin unto you. I will confess. And the journey that he makes here at the end, he's in a dramatically different place. Mm -hmm. Be glad, O oh, you righteous. And he's righteous now because right. of, of the confession, that's because right. he's been justified by God. Be glad. Rejoice, be joyful. Mm -hmm. My heart shows me the wickedness of the ungodly. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own sight until his abominable sin is found out. The words of his mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. He is left off behaving wisely and doing good. He imagines mischief upon his bed and has set himself in no good way. Neither does he abhor anything that is evil. Your mercy, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. Isn't that marvelous? Mm -hmm. How excellent, by the way, those who say that our cats and dogs will not be with us on the new earth. This is an evidence against that. Yeah, it is. How excellent is your mercy, O God. The children of men shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the plenteousness of your house, and you shall give them drink from your pleasures as out of a river. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. O oh, let not the foot of the proud come against me, and let not the hand of the ungodly cast me down. There they have fallen all those who work right who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and ever ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. It is Jay's turn to read 1 Kings, which means that he probably won't have any names at all that are difficult or complicated to pronounce. So Excellent. Let's, yeah, let's see how it goes. Now, Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon when he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram always loved David. And Solomon sent word to Hiram, You know that David my father could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. So I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord said to David my father, your son, whom I shall set on your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name. Now, therefore, command that cedars of Lebanon be cut for me. And my servants will join your servants, and I will pay you for your servants such wages as you set. For you know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidonians. As soon as Hiram heard the words of Solomon, he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, who has given to David a wise son to be over his great people. And Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have heard the message that you have sent me. I am ready to do all you desire in the matter of cedar and cypress timber. My servants shall bring it down to the sea from Lebanon, and I will make it into rafts to go by sea to the place you direct. Oh, how clever. And I will have them broken up there, and you shall receive it. And you shall meet my wishes by providing food for my household. So Hiram supplied Solomon with all the timbers of cedar and cypress that he desired, while Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household and 20,000 cores of beaten oil. Solomon gave this to Hiram year by year, and the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him, and there was a peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. There's so much fragrance in that passage. Mm -hmm. Cedars and and the wheat and... The oil. (laughs) King Solomon drafted forced labor out of all Israel, and the draft numbered 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month, in shifts. They would be a month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram Adoniram was in charge of the draft. Solomon also had 70,000 burden bearers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hill country, besides Solomon's 3,300 chief officers who were over all the work, who had charge of the people who carried on the work. At the king's command, they quarried out great costly stones in order to lay the foundation of the house with dressed stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the men of Gebel did the cutting and prepared the timber and the stone to build the house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you didn't have to like read the names of all of those 3,300 chief officers, no, did that, you? No, that happens the next time you read. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Quarite Dominum. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it, for good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith 
with those who listened. What? This is the, the them that they're talking about is the Israelites who had left Egypt um, and were wandering in the desert. That's in, in case you forgot what we read yesterday. Yeah. For good news came to us just as it did to the Israelites in the desert. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. As he has said, as I swore in my rest, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. <laughs> the, the, the construction of the argument is, is funny. They, I guess they didn't do actual footnotes in these letters. No, that, chapters and verses did not exist yet. But, right. So, and so it just sounds somewhere like... Somewhere spoken, somewhere, somewhere in near this the, way. Somewhere near the front. And God rested on the... <laughs> somewhere near the front. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again, he appoints a certain day, today, saying through David so long afterward in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on, so then there remains a sabbath rest for the people of god for whoever has entered god's rest has also rested from his works as god did from his let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience for the word of god is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and of spirit of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading Hebrews, the sentence construction, because the Greek is so sophisticated, and and also, frankly, because the ESV, which is what we're reading here, is uh, it's, it's not a very dynamic translation. It can sometimes feel a little challenging to actually follow the writer's logic and what he's saying. Um, I encourage you, if you want to, if you're having trouble following, uh, try a translation like um, the Christian Standard Bible or the New Living or even the Message. Um, that can, it, you know, you need to, if you do the Message, you also need to go back to something like ESV and sort of have the two in, in contention with each other to get a really good strong sense. But that'll, it will really help you be like, oh, oh, this is the gist of the argument. Right. This is this is the direction that the writer is heading. Now I don't like the e. I, I don't like the message as much as Elizabeth because it's not a translation. It's no, a paraphrase. It isn't. It isn't. But um, but I can affirm that it's a good thing to read. Um, and and I would strongly recommend the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible, mm -hmm. which is my my current favorite private translation to read. Mine too. Um, the the NIV. The yeah, I mean. Grab a, grab a different translation. Anytime you're having trouble understanding a passage of Scripture, um, grab a different translation. The, you, can, you can download the Olive Tree um, Bible Study app on Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, whatever. All of them. Yeah. And you can get many, many, many different translations, most of them for free. Let's do the Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, 
and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Amen. What do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. You read this one today. O Lord God, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, you raised up your faithful servant, John Christostom, to be bishop and pastor in your church and to feed your flock. Give abundantly to all pastors the gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may minister in your household as true servants of Christ and stewards of your divine mysteries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son <clears throat> went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll now have a time of silence while you lift up your own prayers. Let's conclude this week with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Hey, it's old Johnny Goldenmouth. Almighty God, you, you have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us this week. And we will see you on Monday.